Welcome back to episode 5 of my pen platformer series on YouTube. In this episode, we're going to experiment with making different levels in the game, along with an end goal to reach. So, let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to want to do is create a new custom block. We're going to call this one Draw Portal. And we are going to make this run without screen refresh. Now, we'll move this block down here. And what this block is going to do is it's going to draw the portal for our player to be sucked into to go to the next level. So, what all we need is a little circle. So we can just go pen down and pen up and set the pen size to whatever we want the radius to be. So let's, I think 25 is probably good. And of course we have to go to X, Y. Actually, let's edit this block and give it two inputs. Give it an X and Y input. So we'll go to X, Y, make sure the pen is up and then set the pen size to 25, pen down, and pen up again. That'll draw a dot on the screen. So for now, we're going to make this portal um, just a light, light blue. So now, when I stop the game, when I draw the portal in the middle, you can see there's a little dot, a blue dot drawn in the middle. So I'll move that off to the side. We can see there's a little dot. Now I think this is a little small, so I'm going to increase it to 35. There we go. Okay, so now we need to put this into the main script. And that is going to go right about here. Um, so in the previous episode, we created a glide effect, and this is our entire rendering script. Instead of this, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to create a new custom block called render frame. And this is also going to be run without screen refresh. So in this render frame, we're going to take all these blocks, place them here along with this block right here, right there. So now we can just replace the, all these blocks oops, with this one and replace these blocks with this one. Now, our game operates just as before, but now our frame is um, in its own custom block, so it only has one reference that we need to change. So, we can draw the portal at 50, but we can see when we move around that this blue dot stays in the same place on the screen and doesn't follow the scrolling. That's because we need to add um, in relation to camera X and camera Y. So we'll go um, in camera X and in camera Y. And now when we play, we see that's always, it's following the same spot. So the next thing we can do is place this accordingly to where we really want it to be. So I'm gonna put this at 100 and 100. Now we can just barely hit it by jumping up here and up here. And now this doesn't actually do anything. It's just a dot floating around. The first thing I thought I might do is add a little bit of variation to the size of this dot. So how we do that is we go over to the sensing category and take the timer block. Now we can take the sign of the timer times a value and then times this. And we can add this to um, the original time. So if we do timer times 500, and then we multiply by five, now we can see our end goal is moving. So to make it a little slower, we decrease that. So what these values are is the time, this va very value, is the speed at which this um, portal opens and closes. And this value right here is the speed um, at the distance that it, from the largest to the smallest. So I think that looks pretty good now. The next thing we have to do is actually make our player go into the portal. 
So we're going to create a new list called portal x, portal x, y. And in this list, we're going to manually, manually add some values. And this is going to be 100 and 100. Now, these are going to be our positions of the portal, but we don't have any way of distinguishing when we add more values. So the next thing we have to do is actually make a level variable. Now, this level variable will tell us what level we're on. So we're going to want to set it to level 1 at the start. So we set the level to 1 right here at the start of the game. Now, back to render frame, we have to draw this portal at the position as specified in this list by using this level value. So we can take level times 2, take that minus block, and then take item of portal x, y. Now, the item level times 2 of portal x, y will be the y value, because if the level is 1, then this will be the second value. To get the x value, we must remove 1, so we do it like this. Now, we can put this in here, and we see that our portal should be in the exact same spot. But currently our level is 0, so we re-click re the green flag, and we can see it goes right back in the same spot. Now, the next thing we can do is copy this script right here. Now this will, we will take the distance. If the distance is less than a certain amount to the portal, then we will have to have the player glide to the portal without question. So we can find this distance by taking the player X and the player Y and the portal X and portal Y right here. And putting them in a and putting them in a distance script we're about to write. So we're gonna create another new block called distance. And that's gonna be have four values and it's gonna be x1, y1, x2, and y2. Now we're gonna click run without screen refresh. Now we have a nice custom block. So we'll move this down here for now. And we're going to have to create a new variable called distance. And this is because Scratch does not have the ability to return an, a variable. So we're going to have to make a variable to show what the, the function actually gets. So we're going to set the distance to 0 for now. Actually, we're going to set the distance to x1, take away x2, times oops, times itself. And then we're going to, on the next line, we're going to change distance by y1, take away y2, and times itself. Now what this will do is this will, this is part of the distance formula. And the final thing that we have to do is set distance to the square root of itself. So we take this right here and place it there. So now all we have to do is call distance at the beginning of this if statement. And we do player x, player y, and player um, portal x and portal y. And now we can determine when the distance is less than an object. Um, sorry, a value. So since our radius of the circle was about 35, we're going to make this distance about 45. Now we're going to place this script, well actually not quite, we're going to change these values here to portal x because we want to glide to the portal, not to the um, spawn point. And at the final part, we're going to change the level by 1. So we're going to place that right down here at the end of the frame. Now, if we play the game, we can see that when we get close enough to the portal, we glide into it. And the level goes to the next level. Now, 
this will glitch once you get past it because the portal X will be defaulting to 0, 0 because there are no values to specify the next level. But all we need to do is add some more values. So 100 and let's say 200. And now when we go into the portal, it ends up on level two with the portal in the next position. Now, when we spawn on the next level, we don't want any extra momentum. So we're gonna wanna set the player X to zero, um, the player Y to 50, the SX and SY to zero and jumping to one. So now when we go on, we spawn back in the correct area. Now we can do the same thing with the player's spawn points as we did with the portal spawn points. So I'm going to do that really quickly. We create a player spawn x, y, and all we do is instead of having the player go here, we take item of this, of player spawn, and player spawn, and we place that here, here, um, here, here, and anywhere where we're trying to bring the player X back to the current, the correct position. So we're going to copy these variables and bring them up here to the top of the screen, or actually the top of the script, and place them right here in the script. And we're just going to remove these old variables. Now, the player will spawn at 0, 0 inside of the block. So we're going to create some spawn points. And we're going to change it to the original values, 0, 50. And we're also going to make some new values. And we're going to make negative 50 and 50. So now, when we try playing again, actually after restarting, the player spawns in the correct area and then appears in this new spot. So this is level 2. But typically, we don't want the levels to be the same on each level. So we're going to want to change the position of these lines depending on what level we're on. Now, that is where we go back to this render script. So this was our first lines. This was the, these were the lines for the first level. So what we're going to want to do is create an if else statement. And let's just remove some of these lines right here. And we're going to do if level equals 1. So level equals 1. And then we draw all the lines. And now when we go in, we can say, see, on the next level, there aren't all the lines and the level is different. So to create a third level, all we're just going to want to do is do if level equals 2. And do there. And now we can design as many levels as we want. So, our game is almost done. Now, all there is to do is polish the game and add a few more effects. So I'm going to do that in the sixth and final episode, and that's where the series is going to end.